All right. So everybody, thanks so much for listening. If you're listening to us on one of the podcasting sites, we thank you so much. Like, subscribe, share, everything like that would be great because we are trying to get out to as many listeners as possible. So we thank you for that. If you're listening to us on the radio, we also thank you for that. But we do have a very special guest. She has a new book out, Self-Sabotage No More. It is Jeannie Potter. And it's JeanniePotter.com. You can find more about her. We hope that you do look into the book, again, Self-Sabotage No More, on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, Books A Million, uh, your local bookstores. We try to push that, of course, too, because we do want those small businesses to succeed in general. So enough of that. Jeannie, thanks so much for coming on. Greatly appreciate your time today. Hey, Rob. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. All right, so let's talk about the book in general, because we did get some audience questions, but we do want to kick around the book first. So talk about the book, Self-Sabotage No More. What made you want to write it? Yeah, so I spent a lot of years self-sabotaging myself, uh, like yeah. decades. Uh, so I, uh, when I turned my life around, there were a few key tools that really helped shift things. And I really wanted to share those with other people. On top of that, my background is counseling. Uh, I coach people, uh, entrepreneurs on how to uh, get out of their own way, stop procrastinating, build their businesses, uh, deal with fear and and goals and all kinds of things. And what I noticed with my clients, Rob, was that people know what to do, but they don't do what they know to do. Or uh, they know what not to do and they still do it. And so why? Why do people do that? Why do people show up that way? So I got really passionate and obsessed with studying um, why people self-sabotage and then just kind of narrowed it down to a few few things and shared those in my book because I just, I love seeing people step into their, their true passion and their lives and not sabotage. So what made you want to get into counseling in general? Let's start off with that. Uh, Yeah, so I think I always have had a heart to serve other people. Uh, But when I was younger, I went through some trauma myself, experienced some uh, trauma. And I think I always felt that it would be uh, good to use my hurt to help others. Yeah. So can you kind of a little bit go in depth about the trauma that you had as a child? Because I think people listening or watching this would benefit from listening to your story and hopefully maybe it'll touch them to either go, you know, into uh, therapy in general or even maybe go into counseling if that's what their calling is also. For sure. Yeah. So uh, before the age of 14, I was just kind of a sensitive kid and, uh, you know, I was very sensitive to violence and I, I saw a lot of unpredictable behavior. Um, but when I turned for, when I was 14, uh, I was at a party, I was drinking and an older Mm -hmm. guy took advantage of me in the worst way. And that day, the def my definition of self changed. And so I said, I went from being kind of sweet and good to, I, I literally all of a sudden felt unworthy of love. I felt like no guy, good guy would ever want to date me, want to be with me. I felt like it was my fault. And I went down, now, when that kind of thing happens, often one of two things happens. Someone will go extreme in the showing up and doing all the right things way, or someone will go extreme in the kind of sabotage way. And I went the sabotage way where I just drank more, partied more, hung out with more, you know, people that were bad influences, did did things that weren't great, got into drugs, um, alcohol, you know, in excess. Um, and so like, that's extreme when we're talking about sabotage. Mm. Uh, but that that trauma really created like a couple decades of a pain cycle that I just didn't understand. Yeah. Because there are a lot of women that suffered through what you've went through in general. So I think that story would mean a lot to them because I'm some of them probably have overcame that issue, but also some may still be suffering from that. 
Uh, can we go a little bit in depth? Do you believe that these issues with uh, someone getting taken advantage of, well, how did they come about between men and women? Is it pornography? Is it something that they see between their family members? How does all this come about? Because it seems like it's happening more and more as the years go on. And I do see that a lot of issues now from people that I've spoken with do come from the pornography realm, that they believe that that's real life and that, you know, sexual activity and pornography is real life. And obviously it's totally not. So, yeah, I mean, we're very desensitized what's on TV, what we're shown, um, pornography included. I, I, I remember studying this in university, like a whole course just on this. Our brains don't know it's not real. Yeah. So whether we're watching pornography or a murder mystery or something in between, uh, our brains actually don't know what's real and not real. And so whether you were raped when you were 14 or um, you're, you were beaten or you were in a car accident or um, you experienced something that you experienced as trauma, um, what does happen is we make it mean something. Mm -hmm. And often when we're processing it, we don't have a safe place to process it. So for me, I didn't tell anyone I was raped because I I was worried. I was worried what my parents were gonna say. I knew I'd been drinking, so I felt like it was my fault. I didn't um I didn't feel safe to get help. And I think a lot of women can't talk about what happened to them. Sometimes it's family members and, and men too. Don't like men don't talk about it as much, but yeah. um it's very prevalent with men as well. Uh yeah. sexual abuse. so all the trauma whether it was a car accident or a sexual trauma um what it has in common is that oftentimes we have emotions around that trauma that don't get processed and then they keep popping up in our life causing us to show up in a way that's kind of confusing uh, but yeah. we keep doing it uh and you know personally i i've opened up to this in the past i i still suffer from trauma i have uh had issues that um, have been in my past, uh, a little different than you, but, you know, family members with, uh, you know, very uh, verbally abusive. Um, but regardless of that, I've also had trauma in the past uh, three and a half years ago. I had a trauma that's still lingering on along with the traumas that I just kind of talked to you about. Um, you know, with I have, you don't know this, but people listening to this will, I had um, the injection that a lot of people got in the country and I got injured by that. And I'm still suffering uh, with a lot of injuries uh, due to that. And it affected my life as a person that was an athlete. I've had to uh, change a lot of things in life. Uh, I can do a lot of things compared to a lot of people that did get injured from the injection, uh, but it's still um, obviously lingering on and I'm still suffering. Uh, from those issues. So, you know, personally, me, I don't trust anybody in a white coat. Uh, I know there are people in the white coat that are uh, helpful. And I do appreciate those people. I know some of those people. But a lot of the people in the white coat personally made fun of me. They've laughed at people that I know that have personally also been injured by the injection. They made it a political statement. Uh, it's really disgusting. And I do want to get into since you are a counselor, and I know this has to deal with your book in general, the last four years with the lockdowns, with the mandates, with the injuries, the deaths, whatever it may be, people have been suffering. During the lockdowns, there was many people, uh, children included, along with women and men, that were abused, uh, sexually, not, not sexually abused, but still abused. This was going on and it was not reported, especially for the kids, because the kids, all the reports were coming from the schools. So the kid would go to school and they'd get the, you know, the the crap beaten out of them at home. And the teacher or the guidance counselor would see that and they would report it to uh, Child Protective Services. There was lockdowns. No one was seeing that. This also helped happened rather with women and men. They couldn't leave the house. They were stuck with each other. A lot of bad marriages got even worse due to this. So uh, sorry to ramble, but I do think this is an important topic 
that hasn't really been spoken about too much. We hear about the mental health crisis during COVID. I do believe that's important in general for regular people. But there was a lot of abuse going on during COVID between kids and adults. I totally agree. And I think, again, the, the, the theme is that we weren't allowed to process how we were feeling. No matter what we thought about the injection, whether we were pro or against, we weren't allowed to talk about it. It wasn't safe to talk about it. You talk about it. You didn't know if you were going to get shunned from the family or be invited for family dinner, like, yeah. right. And so it caused also a lot of um, relationship struggles. Like, um, I mean, I was uninvited to a, a uh, retreat that like, I've been doing since kindergarten with these same girls, you know, we've all known each other for years. And because I didn't get the injection, you know, oh, I, good for you say for me <laughs> but I just I mean I'm I'm trying to speak as like neutrally as possible but sure you know, but I, still good for you <laughs> I, mean, I wish I didn't need that I mean that's... honestly like there were it was such a tough decision for everyone there was a yeah. lot of information coming at us and that's the thing right that we weren't able to process it we didn't know what was truth we didn't know what wasn't truth and so what it did was it undermined what used to feel safe it pulled the rug out for a lot of people it pulled the rug out of like whoa I thought the world was like this and actually it's like that and mm -hmm. so that can really um there's a lot of people still struggling from what happened uh, during those times I was traveling when they were advising so I'm in Canada Rob so okay. when they were when whoa, they were advising, that's scary but... over there boy wow <laughs> All right, you know, but go ahead. <laughs> so, so when I was traveling, they were warning us, like, we advise you not to travel. But they weren't actually saying, like, don't travel. Okay, this was, like, earlier days. And uh, I got this opportunity to go to Florida. I actually won a dinner with a mentor. And, like, there was sort of a job possibility. And so uh, I, I went. My husband and I planned it out. Like, hey, I'm just going to be down there 48 hours. Get down there. Go for the dinner. Come back. Like, not tell anyone because people were not like there were a lot of people that vocally were like you shouldn't be traveling you shouldn't be leaving the house you know and so I went quietly to Florida and when I got there Canada changed their rules so I flew to Florida and then Canada changed the rules like coming back into Canada you had to have a no negative COVID test so I got one and uh, I get to Canada I go to you know, I give them my paperwork, I give them my negative test, and they look at it and they go, Oh, you got to go talk to that lady over there. I go talk to that lady over there. And she says, I'm sorry, we don't recognize this test. We're holding you for the next 14 days in a federal uh, facility. Whoa. Uh, and uh, I get led to this like hotel, but the walls are, I didn't like, they said federal facility. It was a hotel. So it wasn't so bad. Like, I was in good hands but like I got there they met me in a hazmat suit handed me a granola bar and a suicide hotline and said oh if you God. if you if you're struggling call this number and was uh, your husband with you at this time no, or... I was by myself and Whoa. Uh, so I my husband saved the day because I phoned him I was like freaking out for 20 million reasons but yeah. there was a guard outside my door I was told I couldn't leave and um if I did leave I could leave but it was a $250,000 fine and <laughs> and jail time jail time federal jail time I'm just a rule follower Rob like I'm seriously like I'm like Anyways, I won't get into the whole long story, but just to say that was really traumatic. It took me a couple of years of like all my tools to move past, even though I made the best. I wrote a book when I was in there. I like, wow. I binge watched TV and slept in and like, you know, I did all these, like, it was fun. Like I had so to- How did you get food and water? All well, that. They knock on your door uh, three times a day with food. Yeah. And like you're in prison. Time, it's a joke. What a joke. And no one was there. And I got so lonely. It was crazy. Like I, I was like, look out. Like, is anyone else? And there were people all down the hallway grabbing their food. I'd be like, 
Yeah, oh my God. God. That's so it. disgusting. Give me, you I, I just though? can't. Here's the point, though. Yeah. I made the best of it, and I had to mentally, I had to go within, and and I had to, like, Swiss accept. Up. I had to accept and uh, and just make the best of it. And I, I ended up, you know, actually getting a lot out of that time. And so the point of my book is to like help people address what's blocking them, whether it was they were locked in a hotel room that had an injury like you did, whatever mm -hmm. happened, we want to address it so that we're not thinking about it all the time so that we're not upset about it still, right years later, yeah. so that we can like, release that emotion and move forward and create the life we want. You know, you're the second therapist I've interviewed from Canada that didn't get the injection and that is against the injection. Uh, it's very unique uh, how that that kind of came about, but uh, it, it's crazy. I, I don't want to go too deep into this. I know the people that are listening to this do agree with you and I on the injection, on what went on in 2020 and beyond. Uh, I do want to save that for another podcast. If you'd be grateful to come back on to talk about your experience and go a little deeper into that, because uh, the in injury from my injection did change my life. Like your life changed through being in that quarantine facility. Again, I was the person that learned that I was listening to the white coats, like they were Jesus Christ. And they were all, most of them were full of, you know, crap. Uh, I also learned the political party that I supported that said they were for freedom were really not, and they are still not. Uh, anyways, we don't have to get into that full song and dance now, but I do want to have you on if you'd be grateful to come back on to tell your story and go a little deeper into uh, those issues that happened in Canada and still are happening with the crazy government that's going on here. We do have uh, some crazy governors and a crazy president in this country. Uh, but regardless of that, we do have some good governor of governors and good officials in this country, uh, like my governor, who I used to hate. And now I really love and I did vote for him in the Republican primary, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis of the state of Florida, who's done phenomenal uh, on COVID and many other issues. And I'm very happy that I voted for him, even though he did not uh, win uh, the primary against Donald Trump. Uh, but regardless of that, uh, now we got to swing gears. Now that was that was tough uh, to swing gears because you really caught my attention on that. Uh, let's talk about politics because you know it's about bringing people together, and obviously COVID brought people apart, not together. You know, I think back to nine eleven in this country, where whether you liked President Bush or you didn't, uh, people had the American flags on their cars. Uh, the country was united. People were happy with each other. Uh, it was about winning the war on terror, whether you, again, again believed in that war or not. Again, I have mixed feelings on what happened uh, with Iraq and Afghanistan. But regardless of that, the country was together. I thought COVID would be a time where we would come together. And instead, uh, we really, in not only this country, the whole world, uh, just kind of went apart from each other in general. Uh, so talk about that because I have family members and you just spoke about your friends that they are against you now for the most part. Uh, you know, I have family members that are still getting these injections. They know my stance on it. Uh, I would never get one of those. They could pay me a billion dollars and I would rather live on the streets uh, than put that in my body again. Uh, but regardless of that, it's really broke up the country still. And a lot of people have woken up to what went on in 2020 and beyond, but a lot of people have not. And a lot of people are still in, I call the, call it the hysteria, wearing the mask, uh, still getting the injections. And again, if they do this again, they will just be very obedient and do it again. I actually think, like, I have a different perspective because sure. I think, I think that, I mean, I, I understand your perspective and I think that everything you said is, you know, in alignment, but, but mm -hmm. it's what we choose to see because I also saw people come together. I also saw it 
like it, it was a bonding experience for those people who chose not to. It was a bonding experience. Well, for... the caravan also, and a lot of those men and women did get yeah. the injections, but they yeah. did come together to fight against uh, the, the, I, I would say uh, they were, these guys are like Hitler uh, in our country and theirs that were forcing these, injections on people that we still don't know what is inside the injections, but people came together to fight against these issues. And, and so I am grateful that that, and they're doing that all over the country in the world uh, right mm -hmm. now. Uh, they're doing it against um, the, the farmers are doing it over. I believe it's in Sweden. Uh, there's protests all over the world that are fighting against what happened in 2020, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I interjected. It's okay. It's just, um, I, I really think like one of the chapters in my book talks about filters mm -hmm. and how we see the world and, uh, you know, I, I call it your sabotage filter. If you have a filter that's, but essentially we're designed, uh, we have something called an RAS filter. Uh, it's your reticular activating system. And it literally lets in four things. One, your name. So that's why when you're in a crowd, you hear your name, you turn around, you don't hear anybody else's name, but you hear your own name. Two, it uh, will let in danger. So allow noise or quick movement. Three, it uh, allows in if someone wants to be romantic with you, it'll let that in. And four, whatever you choose to focus on. And so number four is really important because if you believe that the world is evil or that you can't trust anyone in government or that you, um, you know, I mean, we can make this big or small. It's as small as if you believe you never get a good parking spot, you'll literally never see one because you're only letting in bad parking spots. Right. And so uh, we get to, we get to choose our filter. So the important thing is to choose a filter of what you want to see. Because so often, Rob, we're choosing filters of what we don't want to see, what we who we don't trust, who's wronging us. We always we're always collecting proof uh, to make ourselves right. And so, if we can choose what we're collecting proof for, um, like looking for where the world is coming together, looking for how this has um, changed the world in a positive way, it's harder. Right. But you can still find it. And then when you find it, then you automatically start to collect the proof. And that just feels better. Can you talk about the five step method? Yeah. 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 So the alarm method. So mm -hmm. if what we're talking about right now has triggered you, <laughs> because mm -hmm. I know when I was here in the hotel room and you're like getting all fired up about right. your experience, right? So if, if you're listening to this right now and you're like, you had a trauma or the earlier trauma I talked about triggered a memory, you know, um, notice how you're feeling right now. And if you don't, if you're just listening and, and it's all good, um, you can think about something as simple as procrastination. So if you imagine you're procrastinating about something um, and you really want to do it, but you don't do it. The first step in the alarm method, it's an acronym. A is awareness. So A is awareness on how I'm feeling. So right now, Rob, how are you feeling? All We're all fired up. You're talking about stuff. You're getting excited. Like, how do you feel? When, when I ask you about the injection, how do you feel? Listen, the injection really gets me fired up. And when I, again, when I see these people that were suffering and still are suffering from what the injection did to them, it makes me feel like, you know, and you can't do anything. That's the problem with the injection is uh, you, you see people to, suffering. If you yeah, had to name one word, what's the feeling? What's the feeling? Extremely mad. Well, that's two Extremely words. Extremely mad. But. Okay. Well, that's okay. <laughs> deep anger, deep resentment, right? Okay. Okay. So if you were to just close your eyes for a moment and just notice, so this is the next step. This is L location mm -hmm. where do you feel that in your body in my chest <laughs> you feel it in your chest right we always feel emotion we'll usually feel it in our tummy our chest our shoulders our head okay so you feel it in your chest so your next step and you can close your eyes again if you want to walk through it with me mm -hmm. uh your game uh where i want you to ask the question to yourself 
where have I felt this before? Mm -hmm. Did you get an answer? I've felt this many times before, unfortunately. <laughs> so there, there's not is one there answer. Memory, is there a memory? Well, at, you don't have to share that. But if we were going to go into it, if we were working together, I would get you, I would get you to get specific. Like, okay, I felt that a lot of times. So when was the first time? Oh, I remember I was five and I went to, you know, I my dad told me if I cleaned the room, I could go to Disney. I cleaned my room, I didn't go to Disney. Okay. So let's just pretend that's the memory. Sure. So usually we have an original emotion. I'm not shocked you felt that deep mad a bunch of times that there isn't just one memory because that's what gets triggered for you. For me, I got scared. I didn't, when, when that all happened, I didn't get mad. I got fearful. Okay. For somebody else, they feel guilty. Like, Oh, if I do this, if I do that, they feel like they can't, they can't do anything right. Whatever they choose for someone else. They're sad that the world is in this state that people are dying. So what, whatever we're holding onto our old stuff gets stuck and then we trigger it back up again. So A is for awareness, L is for location, A is for ask the question, when have I felt this before? If you don't have a memory, you can just go to the next step, which is R. R is the, is the release. So we're going to walk through that. So you now know you've got deep mad, okay, extremely mad um, it, that we want to release. OK, and so what we're going to do is we're first of all, I just want you to notice your chest again and I want you to relax your chest. So relax your chest muscles and you can breathe in through your nose now through your mouth a few times. And then you can literally like you're wiping cobwebs from shoulder to wrist, just clear out that mat. You can just release that mat. You can just clear it out from shoulder to wrist, shoulder to wrist, shoulder to wrist like you're wiping cobwebs off with the intention to clear that mat out. And so that's the release. That's my unpacking method. And it works for a bunch of reasons, but that's the most simple explanation is just that it works. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the M in alarm is a mantra. So what do you want to feel? What would you rather feel when you think Happiness. about all this? Happiness, peace, yeah. peace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. That's what I felt. Peace. <laughs> so then for M, we just, we're going to, we're just going to, I feel peace. I feel peace. And you can actually do that same motion, but you're packing it in. So you're bringing peace in. And so um, that's the alarm method. It seems really simple, but um, it's very powerful to identify and release the old stuff that's been popping up and triggering get, getting triggered by current events i mean i think this is important I'm, I'm very forward with the audience that i've went to therapy i still go to therapy I'm grateful i have found one good therapist that's believes in what i believe politically which is important to me <laughs> it sounds sad but it, it has to be that way especially with what happened Again, like we said back in 2020. Uh, so I, I am grateful. And I think that's important for people that have went through some kind of trauma to find somebody to talk to. Because it's all well and good to talk to your family, but they have the bias. You talk to somebody outside that, they don't have that kind of bias. And they can give you those answers that are outside the realm, which, you know, if you were going through your family, you would get the bias answers. Anyways. Uh, you know, we'll move on from that. Anyways, moving towards the end. And I do want to have you on again, like I said, because there's a lot here. And I do want to talk another interview about the COVID stuff. But I, I wanted to get into more about the book, but we're running out of time. Uh, so let's finish off with this. We've talked about quite a few different things today, Jeannie. What do you hope that people learn from our conversation today? And then we'll get into what you hope they learn from the book. Yeah, so from our conversation today, whether you had big trauma or just little things that kind of stacked up, um, it's very simple to make a change once you can identify that emotion behind it. 
Most people, in fact, the average adult, Rob, has around 250 unprocessed emotions. I've worked mm. with people with a couple thousand. Uh, you know, I've worked with people with like four or five, but the average adult has 250 unprocessed emotions. And those are from things like that felt traumatic when we were young. So maybe you and your brother were running and he broke the lamp, but blamed you and no one believed you that it wasn't you. That's a trauma. We can hold on to that and spend the rest right. of our lives trying to prove that, prove ourselves like we are trustworthy or, you know, feel like people don't hear us or these patterns can stay with us. And so um, what I want people to understand, my deepest desire is that you can change. If there is something that you're doing that you don't like doing, but you're doing it like, you know, maybe the way you're eating or how you're showing up in the world, or maybe you want to do something different, or maybe you um, have a dream. Maybe you feel like you can't heal, um, that it's totally possible to heal, that we are miraculously designed to heal. And uh, there's probably some emotion behind that healing journey. All right. Again, for people listening, it's Jeannie Potter, JeannyPotter.com. Definitely go get the book, Self-Sabotage No More, at your local bookstore, at Amazon, at Bonds and Nobles, at uh, Books A Million, wherever the bookstore uh, is around your neck of the woods. Just go there and check out the book because I think it is beneficial to people uh, to read this book and also, you know, find yourself. You need to find what's going on with you before you can make a difference in the world. Again, uh, JeannyPotter.com, self-sabotage no more. Jeannie, thanks so much for coming on. Greatly appreciate you today. Thanks so much, Rob. It's such a pleasure to be on.